Good morning. So Good just so everyone on. knows, I have Nat here with me. We're, oh, uh, Hi, we're Nat. downstairs at the office. Hello. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning. Good morning, Natalie. So um, I guess we'll go into an explanation of what expropriation is. Um, from my understanding, expropriation is the removal of the possession of um, an item or, an, in this case, piece of land or uh, property, building, structure uh, from one entity to another. So in this case, appropriation would be uh, same as Nabi Cree wants to build a greenhouse. So if they already own part of like, uh, I believe last meeting we were talking about a church. If they wanted to take part of that land to put their greenhouse in, that would be, um, I guess like an, an expropriation of that land, uh, of the church land. No, that they already own that. Yeah. Okay, no. Well, I, but a, a better example of it would be um, MCBC owns the church, the school ground, mm -hmm. I believe, where the bunkies are. If you wanted to put a greenhouse there, um, you could make a, an agreement to expropriate some of that school land for the greenhouse from MCBC to Misnabi Cree. That would well, be an example okay. of expropriation. So wouldn't those be privately owned though? I, yeah, I, yeah, it's I, different yes. in terms of yeah, uh, yeah. the reserve land. Yeah, so it's yeah. specific to the reserve land. Okay, so I guess if that example would be switched around, I guess. I, th I think a good way to look at the example would be um, uh, there was land set up with a playground on the reserve. Chief and council have decided that's a better place for a community garden. So they're going to remove the playground and put the greenhouse there instead. So it's no longer a community park. It's being used as a green space. So they're, they're expropriating it for a different use. Um, another example would be there's an industrial area, but they've decided that's a better place for a landfill. So they remove some of the industrial uh, equipment off of that area and use it to create a landfill. So that, that, but those are all parts of the reserve, not a pub, uh, privately owned land, mm -hmm. if that makes sense for everybody. That's a much better explanation. Thank you, Sharina. Yeah, this land, this land code is specific mm -hmm. just to the reservation lands. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe it does include buildings, but we can look into that further. I'm just, when I'm looking at expro, expro Expropriation, it's basically, it's saying property and it's usually expropriated for the purposes of the overall benefit, the benefit of the overall community. So, so is that like to say um, Island View Camp is going to expropriate its its campgrounds and, and stuff like that to Missinabi Creek? Is, so we can talk like that? Yeah, no. I, Island View Island View Camp is again privately owned. It's privately owned, yeah. So unless unless uh, the Mississippi Creek First Nation bought it, and then it would have to go through a process of actually becoming part of the federal federally okay. designated reserve lands. Yeah, the ATR process. Okay. Um. The, the multi-purpose facility though is, is partially on the reserve land. So you know that section right beside the multi-purpose, if the community no longer wanted to leave that as a green space and wanted to utilize it as something else because it's on reserve land, they could expropriate it to be deemed for some other use. Mm -hmm. Right. Michelle, so, could, we, could we share the uh, part? Was, so that we just see about to do that. <laughs> why we're talking about this word and yes. Yeah, I was just thinking the exact same thing for the exact same reason. Be easier if we could look at this. Part four. Yeah, so part four's is, title title is protection of the land, expropriation. 
and then also um, the words, uh, let me go, uh, I'll go back to my own. Um, the very top is, is mutual acquisition by mutual agreement. Mm -hmm. So again, expropriation is also about acquiring, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this, this sets out sort of the rules by which uh, the band, chief and council, the governance um, decides on the use of property of land. So it says that First Nation, MCFN, can expropriate, expropriate an interest or license in Missinabi Creek First Nation land, provided it has made a good faith effort to acquire by mutual agreement interest or license. And then it kind of goes on to set out those rights and interests and how land can be expropriated. Mm -hmm. And essentially it starts here in 16.2, it starts referring to the framework agreement. And so when, when Miss and Abby Cree signed on to develop its own land code, it signed on to uh, a framework agreement, right? And it's a 60 page document that kind of sets out the lay of the land for lack of a better word, but it, it does provide some of that, it's a framework. So when you sign on to it, you agreed to work within the frame of what it, it's, uh, it's saying. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, sorry, Michelle, to kind of... No, 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 you guys are explaining this wanna... better than I can at the moment. Okay, if you want to work through 16.2 and 16.3 until it references the framework, and then I can uh, speak to those framework uh, articles okay. so that we can understand what it's referencing there. Okay, I think I'm getting more a sense uh, on the actual definition here. So if I'm thinking about um, where, like where our lodge is, um, like where we're gonna be building the lodge or like where we had previously started a lodge, um, that, so in the case of a license, could that mean also like um, a business coming onto the land and then expropriating that piece of land for the business? Like say, um, to change that piece up there that we have right now, like it's just saying, um, that we were building the lodge on, say that we had a member that wanted to do milling uh, for the members and they had brought their uh, portable sawmill there on that piece of property. And then we gave them a license to cut and do their thing on that piece of property, which was changed from um, this to that type of thing. That's right. Okay, perfect. Now it's, it makes total it's almost, sense. It's almost like occupancy. Uh, and, and Sharina, what is the word? Uh... If if the if the reserve were to have stayed um, at, uh, an ICS Indigenous Services Canada reservation, you would issue uh, occupancy. Forget the word; it's not a permit. Maybe it is a permit. A certificate, certificate of possession. Certificate. Thank you. Certificate of possession. And I thought there was one about occupancy too. And so, because you're not remaining an Indian Act reservation, you're becoming an FNLM reservation by way of this land code. It's setting out how the band is now going to issue occupancy or certificate of possession. Mm -hmm. So six, 16.2 here sets out rights and interests that may be expropriated. Oh, so it does include building. There we go. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it Maybe. would be any, anything that's on that property that's being used. So the buildings would be considered that property or entity of that, right? Right. So it's saying this one just says may only be expropriated by 
um, in, in, in accordance with the framework. And so it lays out a few things. It's only a seven, uh, got eight points to 17, Article 17, some of which only pertain to Quebec. Um, so it does, the 17 one does talk about a First Nation with the land code in force has the right to expropriate interests or land rights in First Nation lands without consent, if deemed by the First Nation Council to be necessary for community works or other First Nation purposes. So that's it. That's an interesting one, because uh, well, yeah, does that like so? Okay, yeah, it, it can get into issues if somebody's living on that piece of land, right? Yeah. Or or so they already have something there. So then that's where we get yeah. the laws and stuff come in. And this framework literally has to be understood for that purpose. Absolutely. It, and then it does, it does go on to say that if they do that, if the First Nation does that, you know, obviously that person doesn't want, they need to be recompensed somehow. So it's just like a, a highway's going through and your house is in the way and the provincial and federal government buy your house at three times what it's worth. For example, right? Like, I mean, that happens. Some people sit on their properties hoping that they can get 10 times what it's worth because of whatever development is happening around them. Yeah, nail houses. Yeah. What are they called? Nail houses. What? Nail houses. Yeah, nail like the movie house. Up. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, or uh, Aaron Brockovich. Even in Aaron Brockovich, as they're trying to sell their properties because they want to take over all that land for the mining that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to give people like 10 times the amount, but they're still not selling because it's their homes, right? Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, let's hope the reservation isn't on a great big so that, That's another thing. Like, are the people, <laughs> like, would we be able to fight, you know, for our, our lands if the band is trying to take pieces of our lands, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So 17.2 says a First Nations power. Nail houses. Yeah, China actually has a lot of nail houses it, cool. that have uh, freeways running around it. I'm looking at the framework as opposed to the land code. I've seen some things mm -hmm. on uh, online where people are, are not selling and not willing to do certain things and like, yeah, they literally have like highways right in front of their homes or uh, surrounding them and stuff like that because they're not willing to sell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's crazy. I was just watching that movie last night where that that house is the, the man doesn't want to leave the house and uh, he tied all the balloons to it and then that's the movie up. Yeah. okay well yeah. shit i was falling asleep to it, but i was that's what she was just talking about yeah <laughs> yeah that that was a nail house in that movie where everything gets built around it and there's actually been places that have known where they've dug down around the house making it so that the house is on a much higher elevation in an effort to try to force them off the property um and they didn't wow they just left their house there and they walk up that hill every day to get home even though the developer has gone and done something like that. That's crazy. That's, That's it's ironic that I was actually watch, watching that last night. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dunce cap sometimes. Okay, so 17.2 says they, the First Nation needs to do it in accordance with the rules, procedures, in the land code, its laws, and in its agreement. So Keep in mind that first it's this agreement, then it's the land code, and then it's the laws that will be developed, right? Uh, then the next one has to do with Quebec. And it, oh, sorry, in any province or territory other than Quebec, an interest in First Nation land that a First Nation expropriates becomes the property of the First Nation free of any previous claim or encumbrance 
in respect of that interest. So if it does get expropriated by the, the First Nation, then all previous claims or encumbrances are gonzo. And then 1731 is in the province of Quebec. There's still some previous claims. 174. Um, yeah, here's the compensation one. A First Nation that expropriates an interest or land right in First Nation land will give fair compensation on the heads of compensation set out in the Expropriation Act. We might need to go to the Expropriation Act to know what that fair compensation is based on the heads of compensation set out in the Expropriation Act. I'm assuming that that means that the Expropriation Act of Canada sets out a certain standard or level of compensation. I do believe that there was a reference to um, a specific legal document. I don't remember which one it was now, but uh, basically it spelled out uh, what um, was fair for compensation, I guess. 16.8 uh, kind of talks to it a little bit. And 16.9. Yeah, okay, 16.8 says serve reasonable notice of the affected uh, holder. Yeah, and, and Expropriation here. Act. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Expropriation Act that I was looking at that basically spelt out how it would be calculated. Okay. I remember the words uh, market value being in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So this might be where market value. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what market value is based on here. Like we don't want a market value based on a you know, remote northern community necessarily, do we? When when like I I just I think we should look into that a little bit. What market because value if means? a person has a, yeah, like if a person has so say. So say Ty builds his mansion and then chief and council wants to build a highway through it. Um, and he's, and he's put his whole life savings into it, that kind of thing. Are they going to base it on market value of a, a house in Toronto or are they going to base it on a, 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 a property in Chapel? Mm -hmm. And, and maybe we want to, Maybe we want to write in some words that says it's in the middle somewhere where it's not the lowest. I don't know. Just Maybe that's just the, that. that's yeah. just the starting point, and then there's negotiations on top of all that like. between the two parties. Okay. Yeah. That's sixteen what, ten. It's just the way I get out of it. This is a starting point as to where they're going to start and say, "Okay, we'll give you what your house is worth." The guy's going to say, no, they're going to start negotiating and come to an agreement. I have to mention this is too. There's also like market value is one way of measuring, but perceived value is a completely other idea that like, so my taxes for the island that I bought is really low. It's an unorganized township. I have so many freedoms that aren't dictated through municipal governance and the reflection of my taxes uh, doesn't reflect the idea of what people are willing to pay. I've been offered unseen amounts, and I know of a few other properties that were recently sold in the area, like Jan and Virgil's property. Well, Virgil's property was sold, eighty-five thousand, very easily American, right? But the taxes don't reflect market value if you were to go that way. So the perceived value, of what people are willing to pay, is another entity that needs to be considered because you can't just reflect it on what's going on in Shaplow because for 80 grand in Shaplow, you're not going to get much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just like perceived value that, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. And I, and I guess when they do the market value, like around here, they assess what homes are going for in the neighborhood. So I don't know if, uh, and we're also all, seeing, Oh, sorry, Tess, to cut you up. I just wanted to mention that this perceived value is also um, 
a growing real estate favor, somewhat of an issue for uh, uh, metropolitan cities. They're having a hard time a housing crisis and those prices are exceeding you know, inflationary rates and so forth. But that perceived value from the Southern Ontario population who's moving forward here, you can see how our properties values are rising. And that's not completely reflected in the market yet. Like my home in Searchmont is probably worth about 350. I haven't been appraised. I bought it for 140. So at that, those adjustments haven't been made in the market yet. However, that perceived value from a, a growth because houses down here in Oakville are in the millions. So my daughter has a 7,000 square foot home down by the water. She's going to get mega bucks if she ever sells it. And but it, it, it's also affecting our rents now. Because if I want it, say I want it to move out of here. There's no place I can go because they're for a one bedroom, a small one bedroom, they want $1,800 a month. I can't move from here. No, I know it's a crisis. You know, and a lot of people are asking me to move. I can't move. Got to move up to, got to move up to the reserve. Only in the summer. I can't stay winter because I can't take winters. My legs wouldn't hold, it wouldn't be healthy for me. Because I had talked to the doctor about that one. Investigate so. perceived value just so we can revisit that when we have the whole group here. I and think it might so. be something willing to implement because. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we have to. Uh, research it a little more but. yeah we have to talk this one out a little bit more and just make sure that everybody's comfortable with what that means and okay. be able to speak to it when the time comes when we're on that road show and uh, elders uh council and yeah. you know. I, i'm gonna excuse myself quickly i had an important phone call i need to attend to excuse me everybody okay What did 1610 say? Sorry. I just didn't, we didn't read the last two here. Or sorry. Okay. 16. Oh, sorry. 1611. <laughs> yeah. We didn't read 1611 and 1612. Oh, okay. Resolution of disputes shall be determined by neutral evaluation. So that means some sort of third party, I would assume, someone who's neutral in the same manner as provided in part nine of the framework agreement and the 60 day period referred to in the framework shall be applied. Part 10 of the framework agreement. Hang on, I gotta try to find it. IX. IX is nine, right? Okay. Oh, okay. It's a whole section on dispute resolution principles. Out of court processes is referred to in the first part. Try to, right? Try to um, resolve outside of court. And then mediation. It's the general process for dispute resolution. First, try to settle out a court, then mediation, then uh, arbitration. Okay, so it gets submitted to a neutral evaluator within 60 days of referral. Arbitration is a panel of people. And that's uh, set out by the Lands Advisory Board. So that would be when you've got, if it gets to that point, um, First Nation Land Management Advisory Board would step in. There'd be a verifier. 
arranged by the Lands Advisory Board, Canada and the First Nation. Then it talks about neutral evaluation and what it means. So if it gets to arbitration, it has to follow a commercial arbitration code, which is set out in the Commercial Arbitration Act. <laughs> so you'd be abiding by federal, federal law at that point. And then it's court. The last part is court and Judicial review can be undertaken under the Federal Court Act. That's the quick and dirty on the dispute resolution. And it looks like 16.12 talks about the reasons for disputes. So the amount of compensation, And then Michelle, can you move to 16.13? Oh, maybe there isn't one, okay. I just realized I was on mute. That is good to know. Thank you, Tess. Yeah, yeah, move on. You can move on to that other part, what that might okay. mean. Change. Yeah, it's too bad in Google Docs. So Michelle, I would, I suggest um, if you wanted to, because Google Docs doesn't have the ability to do a, a find replace. I don't, I didn't. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. could take it back out, do the find replace, and then upload it back into Google Docs with mm -hmm. all the, with all the. Um, the formatting uh, gets messed up. Oh. Yeah, like really bad. I had to go through, uh, well, I'm going to eventually have to go through and fix it up because you'll see a lot of the um, strange spaces and um, whatnot. Yeah, I did see that. I yeah, did that was going from a Word to the Google Doc. Um, the first sections, I actually went through and fixed it up, but ever since I added in all the rest of the um, draft line code, it's all like this. Okay, eventually the, uh, later on, I'll go through it. under edit. If you go up, yeah, yeah, it's under edit. When you click on that, you go all the way down and it's uh, find and replace. Ah, yay, there we go. So, in First Nation, and then, or yeah, because we don't want to do, just have to be sure that there is in other places where the word name is. And nice. Thanks, Rina. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. I do love Google Docs. I use it for some of my other boards. If you have any other, uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions, I'm still getting familiar with Google, Google Docs. I recommend that you open up a blank Google Doc and then just go through each of the ones to see what matches basically what Word has. Like just make a, mm -hmm. a blank doc one day and play around with it for a while. Don't be mm -hmm. afraid to touch stuff on it. That's always my biggest recommendation to anybody is don't be afraid to touch it. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> it's true of life, eh? Okay. Um, where am I? Oh, I'm at the way bottom.
Okay, so I assume that we're not going to be going through this because we don't have a full complement of members. And unfortunately, David hasn't gotten back to me, so uh, we're going to have to reschedule this meeting again. Yeah, no, no reply from David on my end either. He yeah. hasn't even seen the message, so he may not have a connection at the point right now. Yeah. So according to Nat and Joanne, the email that they have says February 10th for this meeting. 10th? Yeah. I'm not oh. sure why they have the 10th, but I I just got notified this morning of today's meeting. Yeah, it snuck up on me too. And I don't I wasn't sure why, but I'm I'm wondering, oh. did you go in and edit a previous meeting? I did. I See, so that but the time should get the notification because it was tag teamed off of a previous one. Ah, oh, okay. They're thinking, yeah. they're probably thinking right. it's the elders meeting is on the 10th. See, I usually yeah. just go in and make a new one, but somebody had mentioned that I could just switch the date. So I did that. Yeah. That explains. All right. I'll just make new ones. I'll just, yeah. Go back to making new ones. Like I know with a Teams meeting, if I make a new new date change or something on it, it sends out a notification automatically. Yeah. But for some reason, I'm not finding the same with the Zoom ones. I, yeah, I don't Zoom's same definitely thing. different. Okay. So I suggest, um, Michelle, I mean, these are recorded anyway and they're uploaded, but uh, like uh, finding the time to watch the recording could could be an issue for some i know it's even for me oh, to find the time sometimes so them. when you send out the um email for the next meeting it's not healing is it that's closed oh i'll mute can you um summarize you know with a definition of expropriation and what was talked about today reference the framework agreement so that people know that there's another document that is yeah. being referenced um just kind of a i'll add that in with the email too yeah a summary of what was talked about and and you know that we're going to research more on market value what that means and and then we got to part two and that's where we left off and we're going to reconvene Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. Uh, just well, I have everyone here, or at least mostly everyone. So I believe the 16th and 17th is uh, Wednesday and Thursday are definitely not okay. Um, so that leaves Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Is there any specific I'm, times that are better for everyone? I'm not free at all that week. I'm in training all week. Okay. Which week is that? Uh, the 14th to the 18th next week. Yeah, I get to do training on my birthday. Yippee. Oh, no. When's your birthday? Monday. Happy oh, birthday. No. Happy <laughs> birthday. Happy early birthday. Thank you. Fun. You know, what is the You're what's born on a five day? You You're born Australia? on Valentine's Day? I am. Oh, that's so Valentine's Day, baby. Aww. I am. <laughs> Yeah, you guys have Hira. I've got to do the IMS uh, 100 to 300. I have to do Whoa. the 300 for the paperwork side. Yay. Oh. So but in order gonna... to get my 300, I have to do the 100 and 200 through the course so I can get into the 300. Yeah. It sucks. You're, you're not going to be at the Hira? No. Okay, good to know. Um, which is um what date was for that again was it uh did we get it uh a the specific hero? date for that? yeah 16th 17th okay i knew we were i thought we were waiting back from wilbur to make sure that that was still okay is that did we get an okay not yet i did send okay. i'll be honest i talked to him yesterday on the phone and he did say he was he was going to be doing that on the 16th and 17th okay i was talking to him on another matter and he he said he was lined up for it so and that's nine to three. So sorry, Sharina, did you say yes, he did talk about or he didn't? He, when, when I was on the phone with him for another matter, 
he explained that he was going to be meeting and doing the Hira, uh, Hira training on the 16th, 17th for Missing Abbey. Oh, great. Okay. And I still have a draft here in my inbox. I'll be honest, send him a text message. If you want his number, I'll give it to you. But if you okay. send him a text message, he's really good at responding. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I will Thanks, email sir. the way too, but not a problem. A lot of the uh, evacuation planning.